tutorial on forecasting in R smoothing methods part two. So you want to make sure that you've gone back and watched smoothing methods part one because we're going to use some of the same functions and ideas and this will help you understand. This is an intermediate level video in the sense that you need to know how to subset data, you need to know how to read in data, and you need to know some basic plotting. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to read in our seasonalsales.csv file, which is a data set that has the time series in it. Okay, I've read this in and I've looked at the head of it, so the first six observations, and you can see there's just a list of observations. Now, what we're going to want to do is, in order to do a seasonal model, which is what we're going to talk about here, we need to know the seasonal period of things. So how often does uh, the seasonality return? So the data that we have here is quarterly data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it sales2. I'm going to take my old data, which is sales1, which is what I wrote into. And I'm putting here frequency equals 4. So 4 being that it's quarterly. If you had monthly data, it would be 12. If you had yearly data, uh, I mean, uh, weekly data, it would be 52, and so on. So we can run this, and we can see what this looks like. And if we look over here, you can see it transformed our data. Now our data shows it by year, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way through 12, but it has quarter 1, quarter 2, quarter 3, and quarter 4. So it's reorganized our data. And that's fine. We won't have any problems dealing with this, provided we treat it like a time series. So let's look at this data in a plot. So here I'm going to use plot.ts. This is going to plot the time series. And I'm going to plot sales 2, which is my data that I just created. I put the X label to be time, the Y label to be sales. So let's take a look at what this looks like. And here's our sales data. And wow, you can clearly see a definite seasonal pattern in it. Every four periods, there's this massive spike that occurs in sales. And then it kind of dies off for a couple periods. And then wham, uh, a big... Uh, sales and then dies off for a couple periods, then wham. So every four periods there seems to be the spike. And that corresponds to our frequency and that's what we want to make sure that our model estimates. We want to make sure we have a model that can produce the spikes into the future if we choose to forecast with it. Alright, so we're going to use the Holt Winters function and forgive me here, I have a long bit of script. Uh, so we are going to use the Holt Winters function, which we used in part one. Uh, here's our data set, sales two. And if you remember, you can specify the smoothing parameters for the Holt Winters using uh, the statements alpha, beta, and gamma. In the previous ones, we had gamma equals false, which took out the seasonality. But here, our mean smoothing parameter that smooths our level is 0.2. Beta is the smoothing parameter for the trend component. And we've set it to 0 0.1. And here we have gamma equals 0 0.1 as well. So what we're going to do is we are going to run this and see what happens. And as usual, nothing happens. So what we're going to have to do is actually look at this object. All right, now this is what is useful. Notice it gives you the call like before in the last video. It tells you it does have exponential smoothing with trend and additive seasonal component. Later in the code, farther down, we have multiplicative. Here, our smoothing parameters are exactly as we've set them. 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And here are our coefficients. And these coefficients are our level. This is our trend at the end. And these are the seasonal components. For season one, we're going to take our level and trend and then we're going to take off 804. For season two, we're going to take off 824. For season three, we'll take off 810. But for season four, we'll add 2450. That's quite big. So we're going to add these on. And that's what this additive means. Uh, we'll look at multiplicative in a bit. But this is what it estimated for the end. Now, if we don't choose to have specified these values, we can just let R do it by itself. 
And it's actually easier to do that because in our next statement here, uh, for HW2, I'm going to use Holt Winters, but all I'm putting in is Sales 2. I'm not going to do anything else other than this. And when I run this and then look at this output, you can see that it shows the smoothing parameters to be alpha equals zero, beta equals zero, gamma equals 0 0.6485934. Most people would cringe at alpha being equal to zero or beta equal to zero because it's saying neither of them need to be smoothed. Uh, again, we're going to get coefficients like before. This is the level at the end, the 3440. Our trend component at the end is 24. Here are our seasonal components. For this first season, we'll take and subtract off 884. For season two, we'll subtract off 971. For season three, we'll subtract off 976. For season four, we'll add on 2826. Okay, so this shows you a bit of it, but what we really would like to see is what, how well does this fit? So my next bit of code over here is just gonna plot the data set and then it's going to plot the two fitted values on the data set. So I'm using plotts, the same as I had above. Here I'm using Holt Winters 1 fitted, and I can look at this if I want, and it will show me my components and everything. Uh, we're going to make that blue. I'm going to also have Holt Winters 2 fitted, and it will be red. So one is what we specified, and I'm going to call the fixed Holt Winters, and the second one is the estimated Holt Winters. So if I run this, wow, I can really see a difference here. You see the black is what's really happened. The blue is the pre-specified ones, where we pick the smoothing parameters. And the red is what R chose using a mean square error criteria. So if you notice that the R model seems to fit a lot better than does the uh, pre-specified values. And I know if you looked at those smoothing parameters, many of you would cringe saying zero, you can't have zero. But R chose zero and that seems to work. So you can go in and change starting values and stuff and try to get it to pick something else. But we're just going to run with the vanilla right now. Okay, so we have this. Now what we'd like to do is use this to see what our predictions would look like. Okay, so I'm going to use the predict function just like in the last video. We're going to predict eight periods ahead using Holt Winters 1. We're going to do the same thing for Holt Winters 2 as well. And we're going to create prediction intervals. So the first thing I'm going to do is do the fixed model and see what it looks like. But I'm going to run both of these right now. I'm going to write them into eight, uh, Holt Winters 1 dot predict or dot pred HW2 dot pred. And, and these will be the objects that have my predictions in it. Okay, so let's see how the fixed model looks. Okay, here we are. Notice we have our fitted values in red. Our blue is our forecast value, and these C green are our prediction bands, and they are pretty wide. But it does propagate the seasonality forward, which was what our goal was. Our goal was to make sure that moving forward, we had the seasonality in our forecast, and this does exactly that. And it makes sure that we have this in our forecast, and it, it, it's good for us to use, hopefully. So this is for the fixed model, where we specified uh, alpha, beta, and gamma. Now let's look at the one that R chose. So we're just going to do the same thing here, use plot TS. I've set the X limits and the Y limits. I'm putting the fitteds on here. And my prediction bounds, these are very similar to what was in the first video. So you can go back and look at those. The goal here is to just see how these differ. OK, so I get the same thing with R. However, it appears that you might not be able to recognize it, but this looks narrower than what we had before on our previous plot. So it looks like our predictions are narrower. And we can actually look and see if this is true. So let's go back. Let's look at hw1.pred. And I'll see that over here, my upper and my lower, so I have 21, 69, 32, 38. I have uh, 68, 29, and 54, 72. Now let's compare that with the one that R came up with. 
Okay, so it has for the upper 2861 and 2299. So it's much narrower uh, than the uh, fixed values. So it comes up with a narrower interval, which is useful to know that it, it will produce a narrower interval. You can see that the fitted values are also different than the one between the two models. So you can visually see that the predictions are actually different, and that's the fitted column. Okay, so let's go on and change our model to a multiplicative seasonal model. So we're going to do basically the same thing as before, but here we're going to add this statement, seasonal equals multiplicative. The default is additive, so if you don't say anything, it's going to do additive seasonality. But multiplicative seasonality is quite useful sometimes, especially when you think that you would need multiplicative seasonality. And you'll know when you need that or not need that. I'm not going to talk about when you'd want to do that, but this is an option in here. I'm going to run this and write it into HW3. We can look at HW3 and notice, again, our smoothing parameters are now different. We have 0, 0, but now we have 0 0.146. So this is very different than what we had before. Here is our level at the end, our trend at the end, and notice these are no longer big numbers like they were before. Before they were like negative 800 and then 2,000 and something. These are multiplied on. Before we would add or subtract them off. This is multiplied on. So we're saying that if I take the level and the trend, put it together, and then multiply it by this for season one, it's going to reduce the value. Again, multiply for season two, it will reduce the value. For season three, it'll reduce the value. Season four is many times more, 1.87 times higher than the mean. So here, 72% of the mean, 71% of the mean, 70% of the mean, 187% of the mean. So these multiplicative coefficients multiply on versus being added on. And that's why the smoothing parameters are different. Okay, we can also use this to predict just the same as before. The code is really no different than I changed this to HW3 and I have HW3 pred. So if I do this and run this, we can actually look at the predictions if we wish. Okay, and we get uh, different values than what we had before, of course. We have upper and lower values and so on. We can also plot this, which is useful. But look here, it keeps the trend going, even though the smoothing parameter for the trend is not very high, right? It's just not smoothing the trend. Once it figured out the trend, it's just not smoothing it anymore. And the level isn't being smoothed anymore. But these appear to be quite narrow intervals. So, so just look at how narrow these intervals are compared to what we had before. Here we have 2593 as our upper bound, 2,500. If I come back up here to what I had before, I had 2,969 and 2,300. So that's all the difference of about 600. Here the difference is 93. So the, the prediction bounds are much, much narrower than before. Okay, one other thing that you might want to use this for is just to look at the fitted values. So if I look at these fitted values, and I know there's a lot of them here, we just hang on. If I scroll down here, I get X hat, which is the prediction. I get a level, I get a trend, and I get a season. And this shows you the seasonal coefficients, how they're changing through time. But more important, this level here that you're seeing, and this trend, the level is important because it is the seasonally adjusted mean. Okay, This is a seasonally adjusted level, a seasonally adjusted mean. If we took out season, this is what the level would be. So if you're looking to get a seasonally adjusted mean, this column level provides you with that. So you could use that to create some plots. You could use that for benchmarking to see whether or not you have a seasonally adjusted mean if it's gone up or down because you have seasonality, and it's really hard to tell if things have really gone up or gone down. So this removes the effect of seasonality. Okay, so this has been the R video tutorial on forecasting in R, smoothing methods part two. It's been a little long, but as you add seasonality, things get a little more complicated. So if you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.